Robin has a lot on her mind as she crosses the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, heading for the Ken Island home of her estranged husband, Wayne. Friends say she is stressed by the fallout from her affair with her gym instructor, a man engaged to another woman who has reportedly had a serious run-in with Wayne Pope at her house. The impact of all of it on Robin's marriage is devastating. She felt really bad about what she did because she really, really loved Wayne. And at some point, I mean, I think she really, really wanted to make her marriage work. She wanted to go to counseling, and he didn't want any parts of it. And they say she is deeply worried for the safety of her aging great Dane Bella. He used to tease about it all the time, telling her that he, would you know, had the dog put down. He wasn't a nice person with Bella. Robin loved that dog more than anybody. <laughs> more than Wayne. Yeah. But her friends still wonder why she is compelled to drive to Wayne's house alone that night. She would never go anywhere without telling anybody, ever. Police are left with little to go on after Robin's disappearance that night. In the course of their investigation, they check out Robin's gym instructor boyfriend, who is also in the Air Force, and his fiance, who Priscilla says, drove a gun-toting Wayne off their property. He was a pilot. Uh, we actually spoke to his, um, his supervisors and his superiors who told us that, yes, he was in Wichita, Kansas at the time that she, was, she went missing. But what about his jealous fiance? Cops say she's got a solid alibi, too. With that, they turn to Robin's husband, Wayne, hoping to find more answers. The question is, why did Robin want to get, come over there so late? There are a lot of questions about her being alone with him, her, her not feeling safe with around him. Wayne tells police he spoke with Robin on the phone as she drove to his house. But they say that's where the story gets murky. Because according to Wayne, the very next thing he did was fall asleep with Robin less than 15 minutes away. If you know somebody's coming over, especially your estranged wife, you're going to be all right, I'm gonna stay up and, and wait for her, and then I have to go leave because she's coming to the house. I don't, want, I don't feel comfortable being alone with her. We don't think that he was being truthful at all about you know, falling asleep. They're just red flags to us, they just don't add up. Wayne told police he woke up an hour later and went outside to see Robin's car parked in his driveway. She's sleeping in the car. He knocks on the window and says, hey, you know, if you need to get your stuff, Go ahead, get your things, I'm going to my parents. And then police say Wayne got in his own car and drove away. He said he was going to his parents' house. And then when we talked to the parents, the parents said, no, we don't recall him being there. Wayne tells police he returned to his house two hours later, only to find Robin's car empty with her purse, keys and phone sitting in the front seat, but that Robin and Bella are gone. He says he headed out again to search for her. At some point, he is picked up on a store surveillance camera as he stops for coffee. He was at 7-Eleven, we have one video. What time getting, was that? That was about 1.07 uh, a.m. Shortly after that, he stops at Debbie O'Malley's house. He was very distraught. He said, I just don't know where they are. I, Bella and Robin, they disappeared. She came to the house. My lawyer thought it would be best if we're not together alone, so I left. Wayne goes to check on Robin's condo with Debbie O'Malley's daughter, but comes up empty. So they get back to your house, and at this point, it's what time? It was about 2.30ish. And you tell Wayne what? He needs to go home and call the police. And he did. No one. Um, my wife and I are separated um, for about a month now. And she came by the house to get some clothes and see the dog. Her car is still here, but she is nowhere to be found. And our dog is missing too. And I don't know if she stole the dog. You know, I would give her the dog. She doesn't need to do that. I guess send an officer just so we can, I don't know. All right, well, I'll get somebody down here. One of the first things that we listen to, a 911 call from, especially from a spouse, any, anybody, just to find out what their demeanor was, how excited they were. He was pretty excited, I mean, he was pretty excited about it. He was, he seemed relatively, uh, you know, just scared that his wife was missing. It seemed genuine at the time. 
At some point, Debbie says, she remembers calling Robin's cell phone herself. He said, yeah, yeah, but she's not answering her phone. I've tried as well. We went to Wayne's house. And that's when you know we saw the car, and I looked in the window. Her keys, her phone, her makeup bag, everything were just laying on the front seat. He said, yeah, yeah. I said, but he had me call her. <laughs> I didn't understand that. So he was having you call her even though her phone was in her Yeah, vehicle. he knew. They were, yeah, just laying right there. Now living in California, Priscilla gets an early morning call from her younger stepsister, Rachel, the daughter of Robin and Wayne. I, I just cried to my sister and said, I'm sorry, I can't be there right now. I'll be there as soon as I can. And I jumped on the next plane that I could. And Priscilla has her suspicions about her stepfather, Wayne. So you get on the ground and what happens? I talk to investigators. Um, I tell them everything about my childhood, how he was, how he treated animals, the things my mom had told me about him recently, just everything that I could to help the case. The morning after her disappearance, family, friends, and police kick off a massive search for Robin. And that same day, they find a body floating along the rocky shores of Ken Island, not far from Wayne's house. But it isn't Robin Pope. It's a mystery. Next, we confront Robin's husband, Wayne, one last time. What happened to her? Did you kill her? 